And so, Father, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory for yet another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank God for this glorious family, I personally, church family of God's remnant assembly. Hey, we are very grateful. How can we thank God enough? We thank him for his blood that has cleansed us from all sins. We thank him for his authority. The authority we have through his name, his power, his word, his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, because... Jesus is Lord of our destiny. We thank you because you are in charge and you are in control. We thank you because you are our Father, our God, especially for the new month. The month that we call the month of Simeon, the one who wasn't here to hear. And we thank you for this February, the war calls in February. We are very grateful. Thank you for the way you kept us for the first month of January. It was just like a, a snap. It just went. We thank you for grace, for strength, for healing, for miracles, for salvation of our soul and our loved ones. We thank you for the great God, great things you've been doing all over the nations of the earth, not just us. We thank you, O God, for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, how can we start without thanking you? And not just to thank you, but to praise you because you are holy, you are righteous, you are God, you are beautiful, you are worthy. You are the God who change not, who change it not, and yet you change things. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the air by thy great power and thy, thy outstretched hand or arm. Is there anything too hard for thee? You are the God of all flesh. We give you praise. Lord, from the very depth of our heart, we are very grateful. Because before the mountains were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You have been our father, and you always be our father. You are the one who was, who is, who is to come. You are the one of whom it is written, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him is life, and the life is the light of men, and the light shines in darkness. By your word, even as the light is shining right now, and the darkness cannot, cannot comprehend it. Lord, take all the glory, this uh, day just accept our praises especially for all your children who are, who are watching this glorious podcast and we're very grateful to be able to do this lord after we preach to others we are confident in you by your holy spirit that will not be cast away lord be, please be exalted thank you for what you've done in jesus name i like you whenever you're watching me to give god thanks and give him praise i'm telling you man is worthy Let's appreciate him. Let's thank him sincerely from the very depth of our heart that he's keeping us, he's watching over us, that we have been exempted from what is happening to others, that he has never forgotten about us. He's daily thinking about us. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, the thought of good and not evil, to bring you to an experiment and to give you a hope and a future. We are very grateful for what he's doing. And um, it's just the grace of God that's has, has enabled us to look at this first, the uh, epistle of John um, uh, to, to Christians, um, first John, written by Apostle John. Historically, we were able to look into that. And then uh, uh, today is the first episode, uh, part one of four, in the month of February. And so I think we need to just uh, get the ball rolling now. Lord, we thank you once again. We, we pray that you will tongue, uh, touch our tongue with your fire. And open up the heavens. Open up our heart. Help us to build wondrous things out of your law in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, First John, of course, um, we talk about fellowship, relationship, and uh, what connects us with God. God is looking for fellowship. Either where are thou? up to today and that, and uh, anyone that uh, that's able to get into the second or last Adam then that fellowship is restored how do you get into that you give your life to Jesus he is the last Adam or you can call him the second Adam you read the first book of first Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 15 the resurrection chapter you'll understand 
uh, how Jesus qualified to be the second. And the second, there is no third Adam. is <laughs> uh, the second or the last Adam. That's it. The perfect man. The man in the picture. He is the man. Genesis to Revelation. Jesus is the man. You get into Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. We read that in First John last time. And that is, I believe, uh, uh, chapter, this First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Now, the truth is not the theory. The truth, like we said the last time, is a person. The truth is not in us because you didn't because you say, you know one thing, I don't need the blood. I don't need to cleanse myself. I'm pure. I'm righteous. Like Jesus said, there's no one, there's nobody that's that's righteous. No, not one. Not even one. Paul also kind of uh explained that. You know, so and then verse nine, if we confess our sins, and that confession is what lead to forsaking. If we voluntarily confess our sins, you see, the reason why you confess your sins is because you repent. <laughs> you, you repent. You realize, oh my goodness, uh, I'm not supposed to, to do this. I'm, I am tardy. My integrity is questionable. I said five, but I showed up at 501. I'm sorry, Lord. Hey. <laughs> it's not that God is monitoring you, but you're realizing your fellowship. You're working with a perfect God. You're working with a holy God. You're working with a God that takes every word that comes out of your mouth as a word of a man that means what he says. Hey, that's the kind of God you're working with. Enoch walked with God, and he was not. And Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, God told Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. Hey, listen, <laughs> you go before me, I'll be behind you, I'll take care of you, I'll watch over you, go before me. So when you begin to walk with this kind of God, <laughs> you need to know that he doesn't take nonsense. So when you say you are coming at 5, you come at 5, um, 5, p.m. and uh, one second after five, hey, if we say we have no sin, <laughs> God won't do that. I mean, you don't want to break fellowship. God won't do that. God won't think evil. God won't hug someone now and turn back and begin to stab them. These are the things that breaks fellowship with God. I'm not talking about fellowship with man. And if you don't fellowship with God, how do you want to fellowship with man? He said, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. If we confess our sins with the mind of, you know one thing, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to be doing all these things, and this is it. This is the end of it. This is the end of it. Go and see no more. Let's watch things like this come unto you. No, I don't want any worse thing. The Bible says, he is faithful. Jesus is so full of faith. What faith? The faith in the fact that he's going to watch over you to make sure he saved you and I to the end. He is faithful. Jesus is so full of faith because he knows that you are changing. He knows that you are not the same. He knows that you are walking towards becoming like him. And Jesus is just. Now, look at his faithfulness. He's so full of faith because what he says is what he will do. He can never lie. So that's faith. He's not talking about your faith. He's talking about his faith. Jesus is so faithful. He's so full of faith. Which means he's, 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 he's backed by his word. His word. He has magnified, elevated his word above his name. Think about that. I mean, we're talking about the name of Jesus you know, in, in, in GRA, God's Room Assembly, last month. But Jesus said, hey, I've magnified my word above my name. So when I tell you, I'll forgive your sins if you truly confess and forsake, I'm not like those men that lie. No, I will do so. I will do so. I will not put it to your account. I will blot it out. Your sins and iniquity, I will remember no more. You need to know that God is faithful. 
and he wants us to be faithful like him. He's faithful. He's not only faithful, he's just. You know why uh, sins has to be forgiven? It's because of the blood of Jesus. <laughs> he died for us. So he will be telling the father, Daddy, I died for him. I died for her. I paid the price. And hey, I'm faithful and just. He's faithful and just. So justice. So even if the enemy wants to you know bring that to our account bring that to our remembrance make god to want to uh judge us and punish us he'll be saying no my justice i'm just i'm just i'm full of faith i said it he's faithful and just to think about those two things his faithfulness and his justice his faithful and just to forgive us all our sins his faithfulness as his justice not that god is a god of lawlessness no, like you can do whatever you want to do. It's because of his justice. He's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins. That's number one thing he will do. He forgive us. You've done it, but I forgive you. Because you confess and you, 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 you repent. Then the next thing he will do, because now we're dirty. <laughs> Remember what he did even in the Old Testament for high priest Joshua in Zechariah chapter 3. He will cleanse us. From within, from all, all, all unrighteousness. Now, another question there which we might not look at today. We're talking about sins, amatia in Greek. Then we're talking about unrighteousness. In some other places, you see iniquity. In some other places, you see transgression. Hey, these are things that I think if we have one, uh, if we have some other time, we can look into it. Sins unrighteousness transgression iniquity disobedience hey <laughs> remember he would tell folk on the last day he said depart from me ye walkers of iniquity he said let anyone that name the name of the lord depart from iniquity very important Number 10, verse 10 says, First John chapter 1, verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, another thing. You see, if we confess our sins, he will forgive us. If somebody's here and says, oh, no, 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 I'm just like a cutie, holy, righteous person. No, I'm not. I don't do all that kind of a thing. I don't, like the other guy that says, um, I don't drink. I pay my tithe. I come to church. I give. I did. Ah, the other woman went there. He says, Son of David, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Please help me. Please help me. Change me. He said, If we say that we have not sinned, remember John is writing to his children and he's writing to correct the apostasy that is going on. He said, Like little children, listen. Listen. If you say you have not, because you are still children. And I'm telling you, you are graduating from children very soon. So we, we, we ain't going to be talking about sin anymore. <laughs> but if you say you have no sin, we make him a liar. Ah! I think that's grievous. You know who's a liar? Satan. Not that he's a liar, but we make him. If you don't get anything at all today, the first Sunday in the month of February, we call it Simeon. Get this. Have you made God a liar? You are the one you make him to you is a liar. Now, if he's a liar, if, he's, if you say you will be healed, how would you be healed? He's a liar <laughs> to you. If you say I'll prosper, how would you prosper? If you say you raise my 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 my, my uh, pay, how would you raise your pay? If you say you give me job, hey, all those things, the, the foundation of your life is shaky. Why? Because you have made him a liar. How did you make him a liar? You say you have no sin. So every other thing is your shepherd. Oh no, it's not gonna be he's not gonna shepherd, shepherd you because he's your liar. He's a liar to you. He's gonna he's gonna protect. No, he's not gonna protect you because he's a liar. Why is he a liar? You say you have no sin. And I think the other time we define little sin, all unrighteousness is the same. Whatever is not of faith is sin. To him that knowing how to do good, do it not to that person is sin. So we define all that. We make him a liar. Have you made him a liar? And his word is not in us. My goodness. 
Now, <laughs> his word is not enough. So, do you know that we can even be preaching the word, teaching the word, hearing the word, and the word has no resident within us? I'm so touched by the way John finished this thought in First John chapter one. Now, you know, in the old, in the in the real original letter. There is nothing like chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. So here, I don't know how the guys will be feeling when they are reading that, wow, I've made Jesus a liar. If I say I have no sin. That is why if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That is why before we come to the presence of God, the first thing we do when we wake up, anything we do, the first thing is to say, Jesus, please forgive me my sins. In thought, in word, and in deed. You know, that's why we're talking about transgression. Let me look at transgression. For you know, winning so you've committed a sin. To whom that knoweth how to do good, do it not to that person is sin. Now you're judging somebody that is doing other things, but you're already a transgressor because you are not fruitful. Is it that you do what God says you shouldn't do? Or you don't do what God says you should do. Not praying without ceasing, you have committed a sin. <laughs> hmm? Saul did what God says he shouldn't do. Kill all the animals, kill everybody. And God took everything away from him. Hey, that is what I believe majority of us are battling with sin but i got a good god now, this very month the notion of sin will be done away in our life in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every seed of disobedience that will not let us enjoy and experience the blessing of deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 to 13 god is going to take it out of our life in the name of jesus literally we're going to be having men and women myself including my wife my children that we lend to many nations if we are king diligently folks Let's take time. Let's take the time. All the investment we are doing into what we are doing, can we invest into standing upright and righteous before our God? This is very important. That was why John made sure that, hey, before I tell you at, and that anything, before I tell you anything at all, let me tell you about fellowship with God. Oh, you know those days where we say, I'm going, I'm going to fellowship. Because when we're on campus, we say, I'm going to fellowship. You are going to fellowship. Is it a fellowship with men? Or to fellowship with God. Now it's good to fellowship with man because but we cannot fellowship with man if God is not there. Whatever two or more shall be my name before you guys can begin to talk or pray or even talk to another, greet one another, husband and wife and children. Am I there in your presence? Jesus is the one we all gather to fellowship with. Very important. Now I took a lot of time to just give us a recap of what we had last month. Let's go to first John. Chapter 2, now I so much love this. You know why I love it? You are giving yourself to the word. I mean, this is the word. Till I come give attention to reading. I mean, this is raw. Here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. This is what it is. This gets you established in life. This is what you need. This is what I need. Word for word. The word. The word. The word. I mean, you know what we are dissecting now? Jesus. And I can imagine how he's watching us from heaven and he's, he's smiling on us and he's so happy that we are taking the time to look at his instructions for our life. Hallowed be your name. Now, First John chapter 2. Now, look at what John said here. John referred to us as my little children. Man, you see, let me say this. I'm trying as much as possible not to, not to really begin to go into deeper deeper things because if we do so our plan or our focus or mission is to make sure we cover a lot of books <laughs> and so if we just keep on doing and we've been doing good i mean chapter one we we, we cover that for uh for episode that is uh, that is wonderful and we're very grateful to god but so so maybe that could be an homework for you john was not saying my children 
<laughs> John was not saying the little children. And I can tell you, John was not the one who gave birth to all these children. These are his spiritual children, both men and women. And John was not saying our little children. <laughs> My little children. And he didn't say children. They are little so they can hear. Now listen. Who is referring to you as my little children? Do you have a father? Think about it. Do you only have a father by mouth or you have a father by birth? For a son of Zion travail, she brought forth our children. <laughs> my colleagues in ministry seniors and juniors and mate and i thank god for all of y'all and i appreciate you but hey are you sure the children you are calling your children are children that comes from the womb of the morning do you really birth them or they are stolen or somebody's raped to give birth to those children are you sure they are not strange children. In some cases, are you sure they are not bastards? Very important. Are you sure they are not big children? <laughs> My big children, they can't listen to you. <laughs> My big children. Hey, my little, there is a reason why he put little. You will listen to me. Except you be converted to be like, I think John was kind of uh, reminding, I mean, remembering some of the things that he learned from Jesus. Jesus already said in Matthew chapter 18, 3, um, uh, Matthew 18, 3, 4, 5, down the line there. He said, he said, except you be converted to be like a little child when they were all struggling, who's going to be on top, who's going to be the best, who's going to be this and that. He said, no, 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 don't start that with me. Uh, you know, except you be converted to be like a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom. You have no entrance. Thank God that John is raising people that will enter or that are entering the kingdom. He has already, you know, spoken to them about the fact that you need the fellowship with God. I just pray for somebody. Listen to me today. From this day. You will not have fellowship with demons. You will not have fellowship with the powers of darkness. You will not have fellowship only with flesh and blood. You begin to have fellowship with God in the name of Jesus. You'll be in the God class in the name of Jesus. Oh, when you go to pray, you're going to tell your friends, I want to go and fellowship with my father. I want, I want to go and talk to the Father, talk to the Son, talk to the Holy Spirit. I have fellowship. I have a meeting with God. Ah! Madoli Severendo Kappa. When you say, I have a meeting with God, please, I'm in a meeting. How do you feel? Somebody call you, I'm in a meeting. Meeting with what? I'm in a meeting with God. I'm in a meeting with God. My little children. My little children. My little you are my little children. Now, it said that in Isaiah chapter 66, verses 7 and 8. It said, My little children of whom I travel in bath and get unto Christ before me. You it goes back to Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. It said, my of my little children of whom i travail in birth again until christ be formed within you so we can't let go we have to continue to travail until we see god's people prevail and what makes them to prevail is when they become like jesus jesus will always prevail Jesus will always prevail. You hear what God says about Jesus when he was 30. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased. The son started prevailing. He prevailed over principalities, over powers, over sin, over sickness, over the army. He got to the temple. A young man has always been in the temple. Maybe he's a choir member. We don't know. Maybe it was an usher. Maybe he was in tech department. We don't know. But this guy has been there with demons. Until Jesus visited the temple. And he said, ah, young man. <laughs> you are dealing with issues, man. You, you are not alone. And right there in the temple, Jesus cast out 
the demon that has been in a man. It might even be a protocol to the pastor. But for years, nobody recognized that. That is a son. In the name of Jesus, the son is developing in you. Oh, yes, his nature, his character, his power, his glory, his favor, his authority is developing in you in the name of Jesus. My little children, I think enough for that because of time. These things write I unto you. This is a personal letter. Would you open this letter today? You have a letter. You got mail. Hey, well, you got mail. These things write I unto you that you sin not. I know there's this a lot of teaching about, okay, you only sin with your flesh. You cannot sin with your spirit. Hey, John knows that <laughs> we love to hide under a fig tree, a fig tree of excuse and all that. John said, hey, listen, don't, don't, don't ever even say that about me that i'm writing all these things to you to sing so that you know when you just sing oh yeah i got a blood yeah jesus I, all i need to do is just to confess my sins let me just no i'm not writing these things to you because i want to give you liberty to sing but hey listen if any man sing now one my little children i'm not writing to you this to you to sing but now man there is this man of sin within each and every one of us that want to sin. And this man of sin must be crucified. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I die live yet no I, but Christ that lives in me for the life which I now live in the flesh. I live at the feet of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for, for, for me. Gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I'm crucified on the world and the, and the world is crucified unto me. We mortify the deeds of the flesh. The man of sin was also introduced to all in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The man, that man of sin. That man of sin. That's the man that wants to prevent you from going to heaven. That's the man that wants to prevent you from seeing Jesus face to face. That's the man that wants to prevent you from, from experiencing the peace and the tranquility of righteousness. That's the man of sin that doesn't want you to experience the love and the power and the glory and the favor of God. If any man sin, God says, there's something you can do. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. What is he doing? Advocate, lawyer. He is standing there. Jesus is like our messy seat. Oh, yes. It's our messy seat. It's everything to us. It's, it's our brazen altar in the whole testament. Is our messy seat where God the Father is sitting and said, I will sit on the messy seat and I'll begin to talk to you from there. In the most holy place, the advocate is there. The lawyer is there. God is the judge. Psalm 75. Then we have a lawyer who's going to defend us, who's going to speak on our behalf, who's going to plead his blood. He said, he is the propitiation or is the merciful high priest, so to speak, or a messy seat for our sins. He has thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness because of his mercy. And not only, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, let, let, let's learn something here as we begin to run up. So, he has covered the sin of the world if we will respond. What God is looking for here is our response. Now, <laughs> If you if you uh, if you have to go to court and you need to seek um, the assistance of a lawyer, you have to meet with your lawyer. And to be honest with you, the lawyers want you to tell them the truth, so they can know how to defend you. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> they will always ask you what really happened. Yes, so they can defend you. Not, 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 not really, you know, they, they, I don't like, uh, there's some, some uh, attorney um, uh, department or area that I really don't like because hey, sometimes you've done something and they, you told them and you just want to get out of it and they're looking for a way for you to get out. I said that they, they're proving that you've not done it or 
you know, it's not you that did it, or maybe you did it when you are mad or you're out of your sense and all that kind of thing. I mean, just to make sure you're free, but that's not the kind of attorney that Jesus is. All that Jesus will present to the Father is his blood. I died for him. I died for him. And also, he has made me his Lord. He has made me his Savior. And I put my spirit in me, in him. And Daddy, give me some time. Uh, my Holy Spirit is on his, on his inside. He's in a church. He's, he has a word. Give me some time. I will transform him. He's a soul right now. It's a Mary Magdalene full of demons right now. It's a rap right now. But daddy, give me some time. By the power of your word, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the glory that resides in the church, the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, and all those things that God has given unto us by the authority that is in, in the name of Jesus, by the power that is in the blood of Jesus, I will present him to you, Father, as perfect. And more so, I have taken out of him the heart of stone and I've given him the heart of flesh. That's the function of our advocate who's a lawyer he's telling god and he's defending or he's telling god that hey listen he's working on you he said work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure how do you how do you want to why why should you neglect such opportunity this is great. This is beautiful. This is awesome. You can't neglect this. As you are listening to me right now, the Holy Spirit is filling your heart. Is there any sin in your life that has created a gulf between you and God? Or maybe somebody's listening. You have not really even made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I don't care what you've done. His grace is sufficient. Thank God you are not dead. If you're dead right now, it's It's over. It's over. You know why God kept you? Even in your state of ignorance, in your state of sin. You know why he kept you? So you can listen today. So listen, stop crying. Start coming. Come to Jesus. Come to him. Ask for forgiveness of sins. Ask him to cleanse you. Have a ready mind that you're not going back to that habitual life of sin anymore. And I'll tell you something. Your lawyer not based on what you have done, but based on what he has done. He's going to defend you against all attack, against all accusations. Satan is an accuser. And you're going to experience the love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, the power of God, the glory of God. I'm telling you, it's going to come to you. You're going to join the family of God. And remember, John was writing to my little children and he's still referring to some of the things that they are covering up. If God says he's faithful and just, he's dealt with it. Now, First John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, we deal with it today. I want to pray for you. Do you need salvation? Do you need to know Jesus? I want you to pray this prayer, meaning from the depth of your heart. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Take away this iniquity out of me. Help me to walk in your love. Help me to fear you. And from today, I'm yours. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father. My sins and iniquity, you remember no more. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now to take control of my life. And if you've been there, you are saved, and you are still living an habitual life of sin that has brought condemnation to you. Ask God to cleanse you. Father, Say it. Cleanse me. Deliver me from the power of sin. Help me to love righteousness and to hate iniquity. And I'll walk with you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me, for delivering me today by your word. I'm free. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, listen, I'm so glad that John referred to you as my little children. And I'm so glad that you have a lawyer. Yes. He's not absent. He's defending you against all attack, against all accusation, against all corruption. And I'll tell you something, he's not only a lawyer alone. Remember Jesus said, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as we get cleansed, we become a church that is without spot. Whereas the spot is cleansed, 
blemish, you know, is cleansed and purged, and wrinkle, we are now highened by the by the fire of the Holy Spirit, presented perfect before the Lord. We are very thankful to Jesus for bringing this to you, and our prayer is going to be a blessing to the Apostle Church family in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise by the mercy and grace of God. We we'll see you next week if the Lord tarries. And we know His grace is sufficient for all of us. In Jesus' name, shalom.